Is Ben Hogan a stack and tilter? Does Ben Hogan use the stack and tilt golf swing? Well, it's one of the biggest and most hotly debated topics in golf instruction today, and we're going to debunk it right here and right now, diving into the finer points of stack and tilt and comparing Ben Hogan to the stack and tilt golf swing system. Let's get started. Let's kick this off with a description of stack and tilt. Stack and tilt is simply a model for the golf swing. It's the most efficient and simplified way to hit a golf ball. It involves staying centered in the golf swing for having pure contact every single time. It involves accessing the power of swinging on a circle and an arc around the body. And it does it in a body friendly way. And it's nothing really new. As you're going to see here, a lot of the great golfers of all time do the stack and tilt system. So it's a way to model the golf swing to help you play your best golf right now. I've got Ben Hogan on the left, and I've got Charlie Wee, the stack and tilt model, on the right. What is the focus of stack and tilt? This is the big, broad question. The main focus in stack and tilt is to maintain a stable axis in the golf swing, meaning you're very centered over the golf ball. There's not a whole lot of shifting and swaying. The reason for that is very simple. Your shoulders turn in a circle, and the club traces the same outer circle. And if you can trace that inner circle with your shoulders, you're going to have the club tracing the same path. So it's consistent. If you do a lot of shifting and swaying, your contact point moves around. So the player in stack and tilt strives to maintain this stable, centered turn throughout the entirety of the golf swing that helps the club return to the same spot every time. If you want to be consistent, you need to do this. So this is the key move in stack and tilt. Everything I teach you revolves around maintaining this stable axis in the golf swing. So the first thing I'll measure Ben Hogan against is his ability to maintain a stable axis. If you want to be any good at golf, you must maintain a stable axis. It's really, you have to do this. Unless you want to just time everything. So we'll take a look at Ben Hogan and Charlie Wee. I will draw that circle on the shoulders. And if he can keep his shoulders turning in that circle, then he will have a stable axis. So as he takes the club back here, the shoulders turn in a circle to the top of the backswing. And in the follow through, they stay inside of that circle. So this is a really easy way until about the follow through. This is a really easy way to determine if somebody is a stack and tilter, having a stable axis. Of course, this is a move that all great players make. They turn their shoulders in a circle. So it doesn't necessarily make them a stack and tilter if they have a stable axis like this, but it's one of the key differentiators with great ball strikers, their ability to turn those shoulders in a circle. Another thing to help you maintain a stable axis is the ability to keep the player's weight over the front side in the golf swing. The key here is that your front side is a post and the back side pivots around the front post. As Hogan takes the club back, he talks about in his book perhaps shifting a little bit of weight. But for you to maintain a stable axis, you can't do a whole lot of shifting and swaying in the golf swing. It's nearly impossible. So you'll find that as he takes the club back, his left side is relatively up against that wall, and even more so when he gets to the top of his backswing. He hasn't even started the downswing yet. The downswing starts right here. So at the top of his backswing, his left side is even more posted up than it was at address, comparing these two positions, address, and at the top of his backswing, he is through that wall right here. Left hip going through the wall. When we compare this to Charlie Wee, very stable post. You're going to see a lot of similarities here. Check out their ability to stay against the wall. They're posted up against the wall. These two positions are very similar. You look for a backwards K shape to determine if the golfer is centered nicely over the ball. Hogan busts through that wall pretty good because he's loading up the front side more than Charlie, but you can still see this K shape. Another key element in stack and tilt for maintaining the stable axis is the ability to turn your shoulder down to help the shoulders turn in a circle. And it's a key move. Turning the shoulders in a circle is the stable axis. So we need to do that. Axis the axis. 
Pay attention to Charlie's shoulders here. As he takes the club back, you're going to see the left shoulder trace a line that's downward and inward. And it's almost like this half a U shape. Well, with Hogan, for you to turn your shoulders in a circle, you must do the same things. So, here. Initially off the ball, the lead shoulder starts moving more down. Because if he didn't do that, his shoulders wouldn't turn in a circle, and he wouldn't maintain that stable axis. You should strive to have the same thing in your shoulders. So looking at Ben Hogan and Charlie Wee, it's identical. The same pattern is here. The centered turn, the tilt, which creates that stable axis, keeping the weight forward throughout the backswing. Stable, centered shoulder turn. Huge for clean contact. Basically, on this alone, we could say that Hogan is a stack and tilter because that's the most broad concept. Let's go into the finer points of the golf swing. And stack and tilt's finer points are summed up into 10 words. So we're going to start with the first part, which is the weight forward. I already talked about the weight forward, the ability to maintain those shoulders staying in a circle. Keeping the weight forward throughout the golf swing helps you to have this stable axis. So looking at the weight, we pay attention to the front side. Does the front side stay up against that line? Hogan has a little bit of a shift, the slightest amount of shift to the weight to the right. Distancing himself from the wall just a little bit, a couple of inches at the halfway back position. But by the time he gets to the top of his backswing, he is stacked over the golf ball. Stacked meaning the weight is forward, and you can see that the shoulders, hips, and knees are all stacked on top of each other like boxes. Charlie Wee starts off stacked just like Hogan, and he continues to stack his body over top, the shoulders, hips, and knees like that throughout the entirety of the backswing. The weight has to be forward for you to do this. This view will tell you where the weight really is in the golf swing, the rear view. Now, Hogan's cameraman here moved the cameras a little bit, so I'm going to show you where he's at at the top of his backswing. You can see that the right hip is higher than the left hip, and for that to happen, you've got to have some weight more on the front side because gravity works. Ooh, more weight here, pushing down that way, more weight on the front side. If I look at Hogan rear view from the Masters, Top of backswing right here. Top of backswing is determined by the point where the golf club stops moving back and starts moving forward and downswing. So where the club stops moving back, that's the top of the backswing. Then once the club starts moving back toward the golf ball, that's the beginning of the downswing. So the club is continuing moving back. Look at how far forward that butt is from address to top of backswing. For your butt to be that far forward, literally, take your butt, pick it up, and move it forward in front of where you're at right now. I can't quite do that, but do that. You're going to have more weight on that side. Just a simple scale. Your butt's moving this way. Whoop, more weight on the front side. We're going to see the same thing here with Charlie Wee. The weight's staying forward throughout the golf swing. By the time he gets to the top, his head is in place. The hips are a little bit more forward. The weight is over the front side, loading the front side, creating power, but maintaining that stable axis. It's really important. The axis is the magical piece of the golf swing. This right here tells you clearly that Hogan is keeping his weight forward, maintaining a stable axis. So does he pass the test of weight forward and stack and tilt. Yes. So Hogan has his weight forward. Through impact, you could even say he's got his weight more forward, which is normal through impact. And he's matching up 
identically with Charlie Wee here. You're seeing the same pattern here. The next finer point of the stack and tilt golf swing is the hands in concept. That's swinging the hands inward to access the power of swinging on an arc. Think of a football player kicking in at an angle. Nobody kicks in a straight line anymore. It's more powerful to kick in on an angle. Well, same thing here in golf. This helps you access effortless power. So how do we know that this player, we swing in the hands in? Well, we look for the club to trace up the shaft plane here in the backswing. And most importantly, where the hands are positioned at the top of the backswing, which is this. As he takes the club back, Charlie has his left arm crossing his chest. And there's a big connection here between his left arm and his chest and the upper area where the shirt meets the chest, the pec. And then that club has already moved inward. Instead of swinging the club straight back and up, he's swinging the left arm across the chest to bring the club inward to access this power. Left arm continues to cross the chest. And by the time he gets to the top of his backswing, we see the hands behind the right shoulder. So hands through the middle of the right bicep. That tells you if the player has accessed this power of swinging the hands in. You can also look at the left arm, see if it's on the shoulder line. It should be on it or slightly below it. I like it slightly below. As Hogan takes this club back, we see a similarly club tracing the shaft plane line. And the depth is there. Depth meaning, look at the left arm. It's in. It's in. It's across his chest. It's not going straight back. Straight back would be on the foot line. The arm would be more on the foot line. So that would be straight back. It's in off of that. So he's swinging the hands in. Left arm crossing the chest. A little shorter back swing, but we can still see that the hands are indeed in through the middle of the right bicep. And when I take Hogan and put his driver swing up here, you will see more of the hands in matching up with Charlie Wee right here. Hands in behind the trail shoulder through the middle of the right bicep. Another thing to pay attention to is that as the player takes the hands in, he pivots his body more. So the right leg changes its flex. The right leg doesn't maintain a rigid, keep the right leg flexed feeling. It pivots, the right knee pivots. And even though Hogan sets up with a closed stance here, you'll see this with an iron too. the right knee changes flex to allow the hands to travel inward. So look at the change of the knee flex. Right knee moves from yellow line to the new position, red line. Knee has changed flex, hips are turning, pivoting, turning a circle. Charlie Wee, right knee changes flex to allow the hands to travel inward. It's magical, I tell you. So does Hogan pass the test of swinging the hands in? Yes. Bingo. Beautiful. So he fits the stack and tilt definition of hands in. The next stack and tilt concept we're going to take a look at is the shoulder down, which I basically talked about with the stable axis. The shoulder down helps you to turn the shoulders in a circle. So based on that, yes, Hogan turns his shoulder down. But to see it from a different view, we look at how well the player turns their shoulders in relationship to the spine and at address you're tilted forward so you should turn your shoulders in that relationship to the golf ball to help you have precise contact consistently Hogan does not bend forward as much as Charlie but he still has a relationship with the ground so we'll look at does he turn his shoulders 90 degrees to his spine And if you want to maintain a relationship to the golf ball, you've got to turn the shoulder down, the lead shoulder more down. And look at the way Hogan turns his shoulders. He's maintaining his body's relationship to the golf ball throughout the swing. See that forward bend, that forward tilt toward the ground, you maintain that tilt. 
That's the lead shoulder going down. Allows the club to go up. So here we have an easy test. Did he turn his shoulder down? Well, we know he maintains a stable axis. For him to do that, he has to turn his shoulder down. So does Hogan pass that test? Yes, he does. Maintains his relationship to the golf ball in the backswing. And you'll see that maintained throughout the golf swing. We change our relationship through the shot. And then you see the same thing on the opposite end of the swing right shoulder going under feeling. It's maintaining that relationship, that tilt, that inclination to the ground. Most of you would see a huge benefit or a huge increase in your ball striking just by maintaining your body's inclination to the ground throughout the swing. Hogan passes the stack and tilt shoulder down test. The next stack and tilt test arm straight. Keeping the arm straight allows you to have one point of contact every single time and preserves the power in the golf swing. If the arms break down, your contact point will continually move around. So if you're one of those people that likes to flip around, keep those arms straight. We're looking at the relationship of the lead arm and the club shaft. Charlie Wee forms a nice little lowercase y right here. Very important to maintain this throughout the golf swing. Hogan, he has a little bit more of a uppercase Y, but we're going to look at that lead arm, and they're also going to look through impact, do the arms extend fully to straight. For you to be a good ball striker, you need to do this. So I bet he does this. As he takes the club back, lead arm straight. As we takes the club back, lead arm straight halfway back. Top of backswing, lead arm straight and extended. Top of backswing for Hogan, lead arm straight and extended. Coming into impact, we still see the lead arm straight, preserving his power and keeping the arc intact, not breaking it down. At impact, ooh, that's a good shot. Lead arm straight, right arm tucked in supporting. You would see a Y-like shape. So that Y shape right here. They didn't have those kind of high-speed cameras back in his day, but I wish they did. You see the lowercase Y is intact. And through impact, just through right here, you're going to see the arms extended full to straight, maximum power. Taking that beautiful divot, buttery crispy through the ball. And that's where we see full extension of the arms. Same thing you're seeing right here. A lot of you talk about Hogan's release. It's not about turning the club face. It's about hitting really hard with the trail arm in his case. His grip was so weak. And watch my grip episode if you haven't seen that. His grip was so weak and strong at the same time, very unique. But it was set up so that the club face would stay open longer. So he had to hit it really hard with his trail arm, and that would cause the club face to close down through impact aggressively. So it gave the appearance of a release, but he's not really trying to just turn his hands. He's actually just hitting hard through impact. So does Hogan pass the arm straight test? Yes, he does. Then we move to the next part right here, which is the tucking of the hips or the extending of the spine through impact. So we're starting to see extension. This is a power move. The right side crunch, extension. This is body friendly. You're releasing your spine from being compressed. It's extending upward. It's a natural motion. We see extension all the way into the fall through here. Fully extending and releasing your body out of the golf shot. The process of extending the spine, tucking the butt under, he is doing that. He is tucking his butt. He is doing it. Looking at it again from this angle, watch the butt tucking. Right here is the real extension power move. 
the butt tucking. You should be able to hold a grapefruit in your butt right about this area here. You can suck a grapefruit in there. Charlie's a little bit more tucked than Hogan, but at the same point, they're both extending their spine and they are tucking their hips. Look at the amount of foot roll or lack thereof. Right foot. Look at how inward that is. It's not over rotated. For you to tuck your butt and extend your body properly, that trail foot will stay on the ground longer. If it over rotates, that's usually something you see with somebody who is uh, a slicer. We see an aggressive over rotation of the back foot. But keeping that foot down enables you to tuck your hips better. Shorter, more efficient swing, tighter ball flight, more power. So you're cracking the whip. And that trail foot on Hogan, that right foot, has not, it's not standing up. It's still tilted. Charlie Wee. Mimicking the Hogan follow through. So look at this. Look at it. Do you see how identical this is? The finishes? This right arm straight. Left arm, 90 degree relationship. Foot kicked inward, 43 degrees. 40 degrees. Pomegranate, you could fit a pom or a grapefruit in there. Pomegranate, you could probably fit a grapefruit in there. Not as tucked, but still. Hogan has the tucking of the hips, the extending of the spine through the shot. So does Hogan pass the tucking of the hips test? Yes. Based on these stack and tilt concepts, the finer points, which you can find in the stack and tilt book, and the fact that Hogan's maintaining a stable axis, I can conclude, and we could, we could all conclude, that Hogan is a stack and tilter. And there's nothing wrong with that. Because if you want to have that kind of magical ball striking like Hogan, you should really consider the stack and tilt system. If you've been trying the old stuff that's not working, and you want to have the magical buttery consistency of Hogan, you look at what Hogan's actually doing. Some of the stuff he wrote, eh, he didn't actually do what he wrote. But when we look at a comparison of Charlie Wee and Ben Hogan, we're seeing that the patterns in their golf swings are stack and tilt defined patterns. Stable axis, weight forward, hands in, shoulder down, arm straight, tucking the hips to the finish. Hogan, you are a stack and tilter before stack and tilt was even coined. He found that magical sauce in the dirt. And you're gonna find it in the dirt too. If you want to learn this system, in a simplified way, check out my online golf school, Segudo.golf. Help you play the best golf of your life for 10 bucks a month. Seriously, stop wandering around in the golf swing desert. Make life easier on yourself. You only get one shot at life, so you might as well play the best golf when you're in this life. I hope this video helped you understand the relationship between Hogan and Stack and Tilt. As you can see, he passes all the tests with flying colors. Comment below your thoughts on this. Like this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want more content like this. Here are some awesome selections from the Seguro Golf archives above. And down here you'll find Golf School and my subscribe button. Check it out. And I look forward to seeing you in a future episode. Have a rockin' week.